Welcome, brothers and sisters. Uh, today we are going to continue on what we were discussing last week, but we are going to look at it uh, from a different aspect. So this is the foundation of it. In the book of Isaiah 9, 7, the Bible says that of the increase of God's government and peace, there is no end. Uh, we look at uh, Daniel 4, and we're looking at Nebuchadnezzar, and he says something similar. He says that God's dominion is ever from everlasting to everlasting. So it's eternal. It will increase forever. And so for God's dominion, for God's rule and reign to, uh, to, to increase. Because Jesus did not just come to teach the gospel. He said the gospel of the kingdom. What is the kingdom of God? You know, the Bible says that. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. But if you go to uh, any church today and you ask the people, uh, how is it that you are seeking the kingdom and how are you advancing the kingdom of God? Most of the people might tell you what they are doing on Sunday morning, but they, they are not able to tell you how they are advancing the kingdom of God or when they go to work on Monday morning or when they go to their business or they, when they go to their government of offices or when they are doing art and, or, or when they are teaching. So there's this where we, we have to look at it now. From, we are, uh, I'm advising you to, to look at it from a different, uh, uh, a broader view. And so we've been looking at this for the last maybe four teachings. And so when you are looking at, at, uh, at it at a broader view, the reason is, you know, like uh, we, we see this very clearly with Elijah. And so Elijah is at the, you know, he, uh, one day he has this power encounter from God. So he, he goes to Mount Carmel and he calls fire from heaven. And then when he calls fire from heaven, there is that where uh, the fire of God comes and, and we, we see that mighty victory. But after the victory, Jezebel sent a word saying that he was gonna kill him, she was going to kill him. And so he was just after this victory, he, was, he felt alone. And then God told him from there where he was at the hiding, like just hiding from everybody else, God told him to go to the brook. Uh, and so it was very specific instructions. You know where God was sending him? It was so far. It was 40 days journey. It was far. It, there was no people there. Okay, already when he's closer to the people, he was feeling alone. And then now he's sent to a place where it's more lonely. And so when he's going to this place which is more lonely, he, he didn't know what, how God was going to provide for him. But because he was told to go to that place, all he needed to do was obey. Go to the place God said go. Most of us start looking at what is in our hand right now. Are we able to, we want to see the end of the thing before we start doing what God told us to do. And so there has to come to a point where we start doing what he actually said do. And so how, do, then it comes to how do you hear what you're supposed to do? It is simple. You just go before God. Holy Spirit knows everything. And so get to know what he's actually saying you, you do. And then once you hear what God says do, then from there, there's this now, once you hear it, then you start moving because you have to settle. Are you going to believe the word or are you going to, be, to believe only what you see? Because most of the people now, they won't start moving because they haven't seen what it is that God has said to do. And so we see Elijah, he goes to the brook. When he goes to the brook, he's there. He has water from the brook, and then he has this. He didn't know what he's going to eat, but he has this raven that is bringing him meat and bread in the evening, every day. And so God provided for him, but the provision, the leaven, the leaven was not sent uh, uh, where he got the instruction. The leaven was sent where he was supposed to go. That's why I'm saying, if you don't find your purpose on the face of the earth, that means you won't find the resources because the resources of God's kingdom are not sent where you are. They are sent in that place where you are supposed to be. And so once you go there, then that's where you, you find the resources. And so let's continue with, uh, with, um, with Elijah. And so we, uh, we, with, uh, with, uh, with our teaching now, in our teaching, we are seeing that you, you, let's say you have been called to the government. 
And so if you belong to the government, you have to find out the specific area in government. And so once you find it out, the question now you need to ask yourself is, how am I advancing the kingdom of God? And then now you start looking into yourself to see the gifts. First look at the gifts that God has given you. How do you flow? What is your design? Then when you're looking at the gifts, remember you can look at your gifts, but they won't flow as well on Sunday morning because you're not called to the religious mountain. They will flow very well on Monday morning because that is your praise called there. He, when he was told to go to the brook, of charity, that's where the resources were. So what is your brook? If you don't find your brook, if you live another day without finding your brook, you keep saying the resources have not been sent to your brook because you're looking for your resources here and they were sent there. So that is the first part. The second part now that we are going to deal with is we said that like the second son, there's ways, even the first son, the second son, when we were looking at uh, Luke 15, there's ways that we put God on the judgment seat. And so let's look at the second son. Uh, the second son. And so when we are looking at the second son, there's a way that he does not know who he is. There's a way that he's already accusing the younger brother. So he's, put, he, he's, he's called, uh, uh, putting the, the younger brother on the judgment seat. He's accusing the father. He's, he's saying, Father, you didn't provide for me. So what do you do? And also like the first son, what do you do when you find you have iniquity inside of you? So we are going to look at uh, pre presenting petitions. How do you actually, because the Bible is saying that, we come boldly to the throne of grace. And so how do you actually come to the throne of grace? And so let's look at Zechariah 3, 1 through 7. In Zechariah 3, the Bible says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and the Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. So we see the, Joshua, the high priest. We have to settle that part, that Joshua is the high priest. And then there's the angel of the Lord. Most of the people, they can't see this sin. They feel like when God is there, and then there's the angel of the Lord, then there's a high priest, that Satan cannot be right there in their midst. But I'm telling you, sometimes if you have something, and we, we talked about it like two, two shows back, you need to listen. If you have something that belongs to, 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 to the enemy, that which you have that belongs to the enemy gives him the legal light to come even if God is in your presence. If you have something that belongs to the enemy, you, then you don't try to remove it yourself because the father is the fine dresser. And so if the father is the fine dresser, that means that you need to use uh, just like Jesus has said, he's the door. You need to spend time praying. You spend time seeking God. You spend time accessing the doorway and going before the Father who is going to remove those things that you found inside of you that are not supposed to be there. So let's say now you know what God has called you to do. And the uh, example that I'm getting is, let's say you are learning a race. You know there's that race that we, we, we put handles in between the race. And you have to jump through those handles. So let's assume those handles, the race is supposed to be smooth. We are all on a race. We have a destiny. We have a purpose. You have a destiny. You have a purpose. You are learning the race. The race is not supposed to have handles. Or if there are handles, those are just things, crucibles that God put there to strengthen you. But he doesn't need for you to be strengthened by anything else. He needs you to spend time, spending, spending time in the word and be strengthened from the word. And so now you are, you are following, you are, you are learning your race, you are, you, you are pursuing God, you are seeking God. Then you encounter this blockage from the enemy. When you encounter the blockage from the enemy, you can look into your bloodline. And then you see every, every single person, once they get married, they get divorced. 
Every single person, your aunties, your uncles, it's not an isolated case. It's like a, a, a pattern. They are alcoholic. Every place they go, they are alcoholic. Or another place, they are barren. Every single person in your household is barren. Or you look at another case, every single person, the people cannot get, ma uh, get married. And so this, all these things, they, maybe they come to the point of almost getting married, then the person decides no. Nobody, nobody can, people break covenant in their lives. And so if you realize, I don't know why God is addressing this particular handle. And so if you realize that there's areas where every single time covenant is being broken in your life or in your family's life, most of the time we go to God and accuse God, like the elder brother. The elder brother is not finding his resources. He needed to go to the father, like the younger son, and say, Father, you said when you divided the resources, you gave me my portion. How do I access my portion? And we see that with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, God just came and told Adam, name the animals. He didn't tell him, Adam, when I created you, I created you with the capability. Because you have to remember, it's not just giving them a name. The Jewish naming is, is make framing. So that is giving form and function to the thing. And so God didn't take time to tell Adam, I created you with the capability to frame something, to give it form and function. He just told him, name the thing. When Adam stepped out in obedience to the word of God, that's when he realized, whatever I'm speaking, it is being named, it's being formed. It, it's having a function. It's having characteristics. It's having a size. It's having a redemptive function. Every single thing was created had a redemptive function to help man be able to occupy. And so now we, after the fall, that is lost to an extent. But we still need to find the redemptive function of different things. So now we come to the kingdom. And, and that is key. I know I said it very fast. Because when we look at advancing God's kingdom, if we don't understand that every single aspect of our life has a redemptive purpose to be able to, uh, to set up the environment to advance the kingdom of God, we will be keep saying like the older brother and the younger brother, okay, one is saying I'm not worthy, one is saying you gave me nothing. But also we'll be saying the only way I can advance the kingdom is on Sunday morning. And so we have to look at when God created the whole world, he said it was good. How was it good? It had a kingdom agenda. The plants that you see, the every single thing had a kingdom agenda. There's a way that it was supposed to work together to help man to fulfill his purpose. Every single thing. And so now when you're looking at Monday morning, there is that where if you see this handle, first you need to ask yourself, is the handle there because you are running the wrong race and you are in somebody's lane? Because some people are running in people's, other people's lane. That means they have not found their purpose. And so if you have not found your purpose and your destiny, you are doing what another person is doing. You saw them sell meat, now you have started your own butchery. You saw them uh, start this business, then you are starting the business. You saw them buy a truck, now you want to buy a truck. You saw them uh, start doing accounting, now you are doing it, whatever it is. You saw them go to school for engineering, now that's what you are going to the school for engineering. To. In that case, God can put a handle or even the enemy, or you, because you experience, you won't experience a flow, because the resources of the kingdom that God has provided for you are not on that which you are doing. So if you are doing accounting, and you're supposed to be an engineer, that means that the resources that God has given to you were for engineering. 
and the, the resources of the people, the, co the community, the people that you are supposed to meet to actually help you fulfill your destiny were not in the accounting school. They were in the engineering school. And so now these are the places where we are. When we reach to places like that, we need to ask, then what? If this is your case, then what? So this is where we are in the book of Zechariah. Sometimes the handles are because we are running the wrong days. But also the handles, the moment they, they are there, most of us as Christians don't look at cause and effect. Everything that you see happening, if God is really good, something happened to cause it to be there. The thief does not just come to steal, kill, and destroy uh, for no reason. You must, if God is good, then the thief is coming to steal because something gave the thief the authority. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Matthew. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. And so if the enemy has authority to come and put that blockage on your pathway, that means that either you are on the long lane or you have not found your resources, you are not putting yourself through crucible, that could be a crucible to, 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 to start something inside of you to become more and mature so that you can overcome. The other part, it could be the enemy, somebody did something to open the door. So this is where we are. What do you do? And so we see Satan with the Joshua the high priest. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a bread plucked from the fire? So God is going to fight for Joshua according to his destiny. He, he said, is this not a blood plague? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. I'm telling you, the filthy garments that Joshua had are the ones that opened the door for the enemy to access Joshua's life. Joshua showed up when God was there. The angels were there. Zachariah was there. Joshua the high priest was there, and Satan had the audacity to show up right there because Joshua had something that belonged to him. And so now we go on. He answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away, look at the easy way that God dealt with this. You know, Joshua the high priest did what I keep telling you to do stop trying to remove your filthy garments. Because if you could have removed them, they you wouldn't be having them right now. So don't try to remove them. Go before God. Jesus is the way. The bread of Jesus has given you access. Call on the name of God. Access God. The moment you go, like Zachariah, you would think because Joshua the high priest is a high priest, that God will say, hmm, you're a high priest. You're not supposed to have iniquity. What is wrong with you, Joshua? Are you not the one who is supposed to be helping? God did not put Joshua. He does not condemn us. Once we find a way to him, he removes the iniquity. He's a loving father. Once the younger son found his way to the father, the father had compassion. He clothed him. He covered him where he was naked where he felt like he didn't belong, where he wanted to take on another identity. God clothed him. The same thing with Zachariah. God clothed him. God put a, a, a garment over his head. God removed the iniquity. God forgave him. God released his love over him. So what is this thing that you feel that has separated you from God? What does it look like? So go before God and allow him to reconcile you. Jesus came to reconcile us back to the Father, not to condemn us. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in John, we know we read John, 6, John 6, 16. We don't read this verse 17. He who believes is not condemned. If you believe that Jesus is the way, and you go through that way, and the door, and he says, my sheep come in and come out, and guess, get pasture, 
And so like Joshua, let's go in and come out and get pasture. Let's go in and get out and get what it is that God wants us to get. And so as they are going in, as they are going in through the, as, as he's, you are going in through the door, you go in the way you are. Don't try to fix yourself. Then you see, that now Joshua goes in the way he is. He accesses God. And then now Joshua was, so we, we see fast four. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood by before him, saying, Take away, this is God Almighty, take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity, our iniquity from you. I will clothe you with rich robes. So we see the younger son is clothed with rich robes. The Joshua the high priest is clothed with rich robes. The older brother is not clothed with any rich robes. Because when it was time to access the father, he became angry at the father's compassion. So are you sitting in the seat of the scornful, looking at what other people are able to access before God? Judging this one, that they were in sin and now they are serving God. And you yourself have not been accessing the seat, the place, the, that throne where God can remove your iniquity and clothe you with rich robes. Look at Zechariah. Zechariah is, is not jealous. So, he, and he, uh, uh, so look at verse 5. And I said, so Zechariah is the one who is writing the, the Bible. And so he says, and I said in verse 5, let them put a clean turban on his head. That is the way we are supposed to be as brothers and sisters. If we are true brothers and sisters, when we see another one in the body of Christ, remember we are all connected. When we see another one being blessed by God, let's pray. God, we say, God, can you add something more to them? Can you give them health? Can you give them wealth? And whatever you have accessed before God, you get to pray it over them. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus is the Lord of hosts. If you will walk in my ways, and you will keep my commands, so that's where we obtain grace. When you go before God, when he removes the sickness, when he removes the iniquity, remember when he healed the man from the, from the well, from, who had been at the well of Bethesda. When he healed that man, when he saw him later, he said, go and see no more, lest a worse thing comes on you. So you are asking, how is he not able to sin anymore? Because once you access God, the grace that you receive is an empowerment. So God is not just asking you not to sin when he knows you don't have the capability of not sinning. No, he's saying, I have given you the grace. You access the throne. When you access the throne, you get like Joshua. You feel the garments removed. You, you are clothed, the garments that you are clothed in, that means that they give you an empowerment, not only to have an identity, but the capability of living holy. And then he says, if you walk in my ways and you keep my commands, then you shall also judge my house. So that means that when the iniquity, remember the, the, the race that you are learning and the obstacle that is before you, when that obstacle is removed, whatever the name of the obstacle is, it could be not being able to hear God. It could be not be feeling disconnected from God. It could be lack of feeling like you don't have the finances, feeling like you don't have the people. Whatever that obstacle is, it could be sickness in your physical body. It could be emotional uh, issues where you're feeling pain inside of you. It could be anything. When that obstacle is removed, God gives you an empowerment, but also he helps you occupy a different place in his kingdom. And so why won't you come to God and allow him to remove whatever that is? He says we trust him. He's a good God. 
He cannot send us on the earth and not provide all the different ways in which he is supposed to be victorious. Jesus was victorious, and in his victory, we become victorious. And so he has been told he shall judge his house. He shall judge his, his court. But he will also be given praises to walk among those that stood there. You are seated with God in heavenly places. And so I'm going to admonish you today. Would you let God remove that which has been hindering you so that you can be able to walk in the places that God would have you walk? God bless you and we'll continue from there next time.